Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor A, Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you. And today is Business Wellness Wednesdays. It is the day that we incorporate ministry when it comes to our business. We incorporate God in every area of our lives. We wholeheartedly uh, stand upon scripture texts, precept by precept, line by line, where it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. One of the ways of you, if you have come into uh, entrepreneurship, you are a business owner, uh, it also covers ministry, because uh, ministry requires so much order that we cannot even fathom. If we were to relinquish fully unto God and to the authority of the Holy Spirit, uh, some of the things that we go through as far as order for the house of the Lord, it would not be. And if we were to fully relinquish and allow him to lead and guide us in every area of our lives, some things... Mm, we just wouldn't do. I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect in our endeavors, but we will slow our pace to such a crawl that we will reach for the guidance of the Holy Spirit before we make a move. And so that's where I am. I am compelled in every area of my life. I want to consult God. I want to ask him for direction and for guidance. I want to rely on the Holy Spirit. And and so it it, it causes me to slow down and to reevaluate my process and, and the way that I do things to take the time to consult God. And let me tell you something, if I'm going to take the time to consult God, I might as well wait for an answer. And if I'm going to wait on the answer, I might as well take it a little further and follow his guidance. Why? Because he knows what is best for me. And when he gave you that desire, when he gave me that desire, that unction, uh, when he gave me the gifts and talents that he has given me, gifts and talents that I can't even, uh, I can't even take credit for. I can't say I taught myself anything. It was by his grace. It was the Holy Spirit who, who taught me and who led me and, and gave me what God wanted me to have. And so why would I try to do it my way? Listen, I tried. I tried to do things my way. I'm, I'm very transparent. I tried to do things my way, and I thought I knew some areas, and guess what? I didn't know what I was doing. It was trial by error. It was sometimes I was stumbling in the dark. I stepped on my own feet. I bumped into some walls, and I didn't have to go that way. But I'm glad I did. Here's why I'm glad that I did. So that I can share with you as a testimony. So that I can advise you to slow down and really seek the Lord your God concerning every area of your life. And on this Business Wellness Wednesday, we're going to bring our uh, series on strategic thinking to a close. And... Uh, if you are in need of, say, a business plan, we will tap into business plans a little later. But I want to share with you seven important tips on how to release the power of strategic thinking. And number one, no matter what book I may read, I'm always going to go back to the foundational principle of God. 
the true and living God who gave me the idea to begin with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start there. As we read scripture and we study the word of God, we find countless examples that during a time of battle, David and and the children of, of Israel, uh, when they had to fight against their own brother, uh, the tribe of Benjamin, simply because of the facet of discipline, they inquired of the Lord. They asked for instructions. What should we do? So we always start at the head, which is our Father which in heaven. How would you have me to do? What What are your thoughts, God? Because his thoughts are not our thoughts and, and his ways are not our ways. And so I want to take the avenue of thinking out of my hands. Mm -hmm. you, you heard that correctly. I want to take it out of my hands and I want to know the plans of God. If I can connect and absorb and begin to understand and digest the plans of God, the route that he would have me to take, that is going to renew my mind. That is going to put me in a place of strategic thinking. Because the reality is this, we and ourselves, we have to develop the tact of strategic thinking. Many are grab and go. Uh, I'll figure it out along the way. Many have that mindset. That doesn't always work for me. I'm a pre-planner. I like to know specific details. I don't want to stumble along the way. There are going to be some times that, yes, we do need to stumble along the way when we will not inquire of the Lord and when we will not follow his instructions. All right, let's dive into this. Number one. First of all, number one is going back to the Father, following his instructions. He's the one who gave you the idea and the desire anyway, so why not start with him? Another area, it says to become a better strategic thinker, able to formulate and implement plans that will achieve the desire objective. Let's take the following guidelines to heart. First of all, take to heart going back to God. That's number one. So we're actually going to have eight tips. Number two, break down the issue. Let's get over the issue. Let's get over the barrier of self. Get over yourself. I know that's a little harsh. Get over yourself. You don't know everything. We don't know everything. Get over that. Someone knows more than you. Get over it. Get over that attitude and that mentality. Oh, I got this. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Listen, there were people before you, thousands and thousands of years before you. Get over yourself. Get over it. The first step in strategic thinking is to break down an issue into smaller, more manageable parts so that you can focus on them more effectively. So you have a goal that you want to meet. And it's a big goal. On last Wednesday, we at the close, we actually mentioned a 30, 60, 90 day projectile that we indicated. Here, when you have a major goal, the key is to, according to the size of the goal, put it out, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. That's your projectile. And you have some cushion. Now, 
whether you want to work on it daily or weekly, that's up to you. But you have the, the, the main focus, you have the big goal. Then you break that big goal down into smaller attainable goals. The small portions will add up to the big manifestation. And so I have this big goal and I'm going to use uh, the aspect of, say, publishing. Uh, normally, um, if everything goes smoothly and well, three months, okay, um, you put that out. That's a 90 day. Now, am I going to set attainable goals to reach that 90 day date? I want to do things that will get me closer to that. If it is, uh, if, if you have to type up a manuscript, all depends on how big it is, you spend time, you type it up. Then you have your editing process. Or if you're getting a manuscript that, that you have to proofread and it's already typed up, then go through that process. You do little bits at a time until you reach the big goal. And so here, break down the issue. What is the issue? The issue is the goal. It is attainable if you strategically think about it and plan it out well. Another area is ask why before how. Why is this being done? That goes back to the foundation of the Father which is in heaven. Now, if what you are doing is kingdom connected, and when I say kingdom connected, is it the will of God that you're doing this? Whatever you find your hands to do, he'll bless it. But I want to make sure, is this where God would have me to operate in? Did God call me into this area of expertise, of, of business, of, of gifts and talents? Is it, are, are these the plans that he has for my life? If you can answer that question, guess what? Then you can answer the why before the how. Always have a reason before you try to figure out how to do it. why if you can define the why then you seek the plans on the how 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 is it that how is this going to come to pass first have a why number 3 identify the real issues and objectives what are the issues and what are the object objectives from the book, How Successful People Lead, the author writes, William Feather, author of The Business of Life, said, before it can be solved, a problem must be clearly defined. Too many people rush to solutions, and as a result, they end up solving the wrong problem. That's good. Let me read that again. Too many people rush to solutions, and as a result, they end up solving the wrong problem problem. To avoid that, ask probing questions to expose the real issues. What are the real issues? We're talking about strategic thinking here on Business Wellness Wednesdays on the Balance of Life. I thank you so very much for joining us today and, and I like to take this time just to, to help those who are in business, first of all, in, invite God in every area of your life. Make sure that what you are doing, it is the will of God for your life. Define your why, why you're doing it. And we're giving you tips today on how to release the power of strategic thinking. We started off with the foundation of God. He is the beginning. Breaking down the issue, which is the goal. Asking why before how. Now we are at identify the real issues and objectives. And I love this quote, too many people rush to solutions. And as a result, they end up solving the wrong problem. But once again, 
if we take the time to seek God and we get the proper instructions and we follow them as they are given to us, we won't solve the wrong problem. It's when we take uh, our, our, our self from the guidance of God and we try to handle things ourselves and then we are addressing the wrong problem. So you have to ask yourself some probing questions to expose the real issues. Mm. Yes, business has some real issues. Uh, is it um, is it the, the management style? Is it uh, training? Is it uh, lack of training? Uh, overtraining? Uh, there are so many things that are going on. Is it that we have people doing uh, the wrong thing? In, in other words, they're in the wrong position. This happens in ministry also. Uh, having people there just to fill a void, just to fill a space, that's really not their position. And so they're not fulfilling it adequately. Another area is to review, review your resources. What resources do you have? And keep in mind, resources are not always financial. Resources is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It's godly counsel. And so here it says... A strategy that doesn't take into an account resources is doomed for failure. Take an inventory. How much time do you have? How much money do you have? What kind of materials, supplies, or inventory do you have? What are your other assets? What liabilities or obligations will come into play? I want to say this when he's talking about uh, review your resources. Also, identifying real issues and objectives. Sometimes um, we might feel that uh, something costs too much. But we assume because we're looking from the outside in and we're not really checking to find out what it really costs. And so I can, I can absolutely attest to that. Uh, four years ago when um, just talking to my aunt on the phone, I heard radio. And I immediately said within myself, I can't afford radio. That's expensive. But nevertheless, and I kept quiet, I'm, I'm having this inner conversation. I looked it up and I came across the link that we're on now for any internet radio, Spryker. And uh, to begin with, they have a free... Um, it was done in 15 minute increments and and so I decided I was going to sign up just to get some practice and 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 I was practicing and I was in my office and I didn't say anyone and and I've shared this with you before and I, I hope it's helping someone along the way because sometimes we like I said we can feel uh, that's out of my league that's out of my budget when in fact, guess what? It's in your budget. We can't assume, but we have to check out the resources. And so one day I'm in my office and I'm practicing and uh, my cell phone keeps ringing. It's after five o'clock and the main doors to the building are closed. And I'm in my office and I'm practicing. And I look at the phone and it's my son and he has called me a couple of times. And finally I, I paused what I was doing and I answered the phone and and he said, hey, I've been trying to call you. It came to me to come by your office to check on you. Like I said, it's after hours and the main doors are locked and I'm in my office and I'm practicing. And so at this moment, I said, well, okay, yes, I, I am here in the office. And he was outside in the parking lot and I went out to open up the door so he can come in. And, and I was sharing with him what I was doing. Now, this is the first person I'm sharing that I want, that I'm practicing for radio. And my son says, you want to do radio? And I said, yes, I feel I, I'm being led into doing radio. Now, here is checking your resources. 
my son asked me how much it was and I told him I signed up for the free and when I had saved up the money because I want to pay I wanted to pay for the year I didn't want monthly payments I wanted to pay by the year and my son said to me if that's what you want to do I will bring you the money tomorrow which was the next day to pay for my year of radio now let's go back and review that my first thought when it hit my spirit is I can't afford that and to be honest what if I would have stopped what if I would not have looked and typed in radio online radio to even find out what was out there what were my options I only knew of going to the radio station locally and the cost of that I had no idea of really about internet radio and so we have to check we have to break down some issues we have to do some reviewing and we also have to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit and look at what God has allowed us to do we're four years in into doing radio and by that one link we are international we're not just in one city one county one state we are international and we are on several different platforms but through the main area that God sent us to so that's why I said it's so important to consult God follow his instructions I'm so glad about that day I'm so glad that uh, my phone kept ringing and I said to my son hey he keeps calling me and therefore I'm going to answer so I'm so glad about that particular opportunity all right when we come back I want to dive in into some more um, the next area I want to dive into is developing your plan putting the right people in the right place and keep repeating the process we'll be back in a moment If you've just tuned in, you've tuned into the balance of life, and I thank you so very much for joining us today on this Business Wellness Wednesday. We're talking about how to release the power of strategic thinking in your business, and it always is going to start with God. It's going to start with how He would have us to move and to operate uh, in our lives, and and that is the beginning. And guess what? That should be the ending of what we do and let me not forget I'm so excited about our new website for the College of Ministry and mentoring uh, we released a new website I want to say a week ago might be two weeks ago uh, it is www.angelfergusonministries.com this website is dedicated only to the College of Ministry there on the website you can check out uh, our curriculum and the time and the pricing uh, we also added the life applications there is a page for that so we have a series for 2021 uploaded on the website also we have a tab for Bible study teachings and so there are some Bible studies that are on there as well where we want to share with you for the growth of your life and to draw you closer unto our Savior once again our website angelfergusonministries.com we're so excited about this new release and we have some other things in store that we're working on and, and we will release those things at the appointed time so I'm so glad that we are in an area talking about strategic thinking and planning because that's what it takes um, I, I can say that for me uh, because I have learned over the years I wait on the Holy Spirit and and 
to begin with, I would sit at my computer until he would show me how to do something. And, and so that's how I learned how to do a lot of things. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there were not those times that um, I became anxious and I moved ahead because I surely did, only to go back to correct some things. And we covered that in the last segment. So I'm going to read this again because I want you to catch it in your spirit. Too many people rush to solutions and as a result, they end up solving the wrong problem. When we rush ahead, we have to go back and we have to correct some things. All right, let's move forward. We talked about reviewing your resources. Now I want to talk about developing your plan. How you approach the planning process depends greatly on your profession and the size of the challenge you're planning to tackle. So it's difficult to recommend anything specific. However, no matter how you go about planning, take this advice. Start with the obvious. When you tackle an issue or plan that way, it brings unity and consensus to the team because everyone sees those things. Obvious elements build mental momentum and initiate creativity and intensity. The best way to create a road is to com- is the complex is to build on the fundamentals. And so you have the objective. We have to develop a plan to make it happen. Develop a plan to make it happen. I'm going to say that for the third time. Develop a plan to make it happen happen it's like it's it's like decorating a room you don't want to decorate the room piece by piece Mm -mm. Uh, and and you want to decorate the the room in a certain order a certain fashion and so if you need to paint do the painting before you replace the carpet and you bring in the furniture Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Do the painting first before you bring in the other elements. If you need to change the carpet, uh, do the painting first. Bring in the furniture after the painting. And here's another key for all my decorators. Lay the carpet before you bring in the furniture. You don't want to bring in the furniture and have to take it back out to lay the carpet to bring it back in. All depends on what you're doing in the room. So inventory the project, inventory the goal. What is it that you want to do and plan accordingly? Plan accordingly. Strategic planning and strategic thinking are one and one. Here's something else. Put the right people in the right place. Put the right people in the right place. If I don't know how to paint, don't put me on painting. If I can hang your drapes, put me on that task. I don't want to mess up your paint. Put me in the right place. And listen to me when I tell you of my area that I work the best. Don't tell me, oh, you can do it. I'll guide you along the way. No, I'm trying to tell you ahead of time where I work most effectively. And I'll also tell you if I want to learn another trade. But listen to me. Put me in the right place because I want this to come together just as well as you do. But put me in the right place to begin with. Here's what happens when we put people in the wrong place. The wrong person, problems instead of potential. Wrong place brings frustration instead of fulfillment. And the wrong plan, grief instead of growth. I'm going to read those again. If you have the wrong person in the wrong place, problems instead of potential. If you put them in the wrong place, frustration instead of fulfillment. And if you have the wrong plan, it's grief instead of growth. And last but not least, keep repeating the process. Repeat the process. God is always the beginning. I've said it before. He's at the beginning and he's at the end. He does not change positions and he's all the way through. I pray that what we've been sharing with you during this season 
of strategic thinking this series has has helped you and if you would like to hear more on it email us today have a blessed day everyone stay encouraged